Revit's view range feature allows users to manage the visibility of specific elements and how these are seen within a specific view. To help understand the impact of the settings, Revit includes this show button. The primary range is better described as the visible range and is controlled by three horizontal planes, top, cut and bottom. The view range tool has long been one of those extremely frustrating functions within Revit that no one really seems to understand. In this video, I will show you how to use the view range tool in Revit, unlocking the mystery, allowing you to master view range forever. Looking at this example, the values applied to each of the horizontal planes tell a story. The user had lots of trouble in getting the view to display all of the information they required, which is to showcase the roof detail across the whole site all the way down to the car park levels. For context, I have included this sectional marker. Let's go to this view. The first thing to notice is that the site is split into two levels. So, the complexity here is in getting the roof and car park levels visible for both sides of the site, but in one floor plan view. The guide I spoke about earlier is presented in a sectional view, suggesting that it's easier to understand the requirements of view range from such a view. But notice that when in sectional view, the view range parameter is not visible. So, I have created this basic parametric family to help me understand which values to apply to each of the required horizontal planes. The family is made up of two colored overlays which are controlled parametrically. Inbuilt reference planes make it easy to add dimensions as references for the parametric values. On screen, the family has been set to reflect the values applied in the view range of our example. Back on the floor plan, take note of the associated level. Each view range is associated to a level which the horizontal planes are then offset from. I then switch back to the sectional view. The associated view for the current plan is this one over here. Notice that this is well below each roof. So the next tip is to create a level where you need it. For example, here I take this already existing level and copy it above the ridge line for each roof. And then from the view tab, find plan views and then floor plan. Now select the recently created example level. Revit will automatically redirect you to this view in the floor plan orientation. Now remember, this plane hovers above the ridge line of the buildings. And so, because of the default settings, nothing is currently visible. Don't freak out, this is meant to happen. On the Properties tab, find the view range parameter. Now, typically with floor plans, we slice through the building at the cut plane and then look down. So another tip with floor plans is to focus your attention here. Remembering our view range guide, I won't toggle the values just yet. I will refer back to the section and use the family to understand what values are required. I add a new dimension from the new level down to the associated level. This is the new primary range. The view depth can be removed by setting the value to zero. I then add the total range, which is the primary range plus the depth. So this value is 7000 to match 
the dimension. Now move the family up so that it is aligned to the new level. And then set the cut plane. This can be just below the top. So to be clear, we have a 500mm offset from the top plane. Now that I have worked out my values, I can switch back over to the floor plan and add the values in. In part two, I will demonstrate how to now view the floor plans on both sides of the split, but on the same view. The lowest building is hosted to this level, so this will be the starting point. As done previously, the next step is to adjust the parameter values to focus on what I need to see. I start by adjusting the cut plane. I adjust the view so that I can see both sides of the site. If I leave it like this, the ceiling here will be seen. So I'll adjust the value so that the cut plane is below the ceiling line. The new plane needs to be associated to this level. So I can go ahead and create a floor plan view And to confirm, here is the association. At the moment, I can't see the building outline on the higher side of the site. So I need to adjust the view range. Let me first close these views so that I can tile the views of interest. Now I use the dimensions to determine the required values. And then I set the cut value to 2500 as required. However, all planes are referring to the same level, and so the cut plane cannot be above the top plane. But there is another option the level above. So from the level above, I add a second dimension. And then I can go back to the view range. I redefine the reference to the level above and type in the value required. I also re-enter the cut plane value previously determined as 2500. I can now see all of the required buildings, but I can also see the skylights, which I don't want to see. I can see these because they are in the highlighted zone just under the top clip plane. I will cancel and redefine the settings a third time. I adjust the view so that I can see both sides of the site. Then by selecting the view range family, I can simply lower the top clip plane using the shape handles. With that done, I can reset the view and set the view range again, this time entering the new top clip value of 3200. Now, I'll use the same principles to demonstrate how to control the view range on ceiling plans. Again, I start with the sectional view to provide 
the context. I create the ceiling plan. In this example, the area of interest is this space here, so I choose level 1. And here is the ceiling plan. And straight away you can see that something doesn't look right. The area of interest is all black. Let's take a deeper look. I'll load in the view range family and close any unrequired views. I can then tile the views of interest. Let's have a look at the default view range settings and use the view range family to understand why the ceiling plan is black. I adjust the parameter values to match the default view range settings. And now it's obvious what the problem is. The cut plane is cutting through the slab overhead. This is another great example of how this view range family guide is so invaluable. I can now also use the family to determine the required values and then apply those to the view range. And there you go. I can now see the ceiling and the feature lights that are face mounted. But here is the interesting thing. The reference level for the ceiling plan is level 1. So why does the view range here refer to level 2? If I change this to level 1, Revit returns a warning. And to confuse matters more, the warning reads that the depth is below the top clip. The view range diagram shows the view range at the bottom. I'll set this back to the default settings for now. The reason for this is that on ceiling plans, we are looking up, so the depth is actually at the top. Interestingly, the horizontal planes that make up the view range remain in the same order, so the depth is directly over the top clip. So now, this makes sense. I was asking Revit to put the depth down here, which of course is below this line, the top clip. With this understanding, I can still set the depth to level 1 and get the view to work, if I also change the cut plane and the top clip. Let me show you. That's the end of the video. I hope that you learnt something new and that you found it interesting. If you did, consider subscribing 
and hit the like button and drop a comment. And I'll see you in the next video.